But I have a dream. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. More than 50 years have passed since Martin Luther King gave one of the most well-known and inspirational speeches of the 20th century. Yet prejudice and social discrimination are still highly prevalent in today's world. According to Alport, prejudice is a normal product of something we all do, which is called categorization. Furthermore, people have the innate tendency to maintain a positive image of themselves and the group they belong to. In order to do so, we tend to maximize the difference between the group we belong to, or the so-called in-group, and members that don't belong to our group, the so-called out-group. Having a more positive image of the in-group is often at the expense of the out-group. So given that we are aware of this human tendency, how can we influence it? In order to answer this question, it is important to know the neural underpinnings of this behavior. One brain area that has been shown to play a critical role in social cognitive processes and social stereotyping is the medial prefrontal cortex. It has been suggested that the medial prefrontal cortex may actually mediate the implicit bias that in-group members present towards individuals of the out-group. However, the exact role of the medial prefrontal cortex with regard to this phenomenon is still unclear. In this study, we directly assessed the role of the medial prefrontal cortex and its ability to mediate implicit bias by using transcranial direct current stimulation. With this method, it is possible to either increase or decrease cortical excitability in a specific brain area, depending on the type of stimulation. This is done by applying a weak current through electrodes placed on the scalp. In our study, 60 participants were randomly assigned to three conditions. They received either anodal stimulation, which increases cortical excitability, cathodal stimulation, which decreases cortical excitability, or sham stimulation, where the participant feels as if he or she receives stimulation, but in fact does not. Participants didn't know which type of stimulation they received. During the stimulation, they had to complete the implicit association task, which is a reliable task that measures implicit bias and social stereotyping. So what was the result? We found that anodal stimulation of the medial prefrontal cortex significantly reduced implicit bias. Because this type of stimulation leads to an increase of cortical excitability, it seems that under normal circumstances, the medial prefrontal cortex is responsible for controlling implicit biased attitudes. This is the first time that such a causal role of the medial prefrontal cortex in regulating implicit bias has been demonstrated. These exciting results imply that the dream of Martin Luther King can one day become reality and we will finally be able to reduce prejudice.